So Aubrey, welcome to the Ty Lopez show here in my garage. And uh, you're one of the most well-known marketers. You built big funnels, spending a hundred grand a day. You do it for other people. You do it for yourself. I'm going to ask you, I got some very interesting questions because people ask me, what's the best platform? YouTube, Facebook. What's better? High ticket, low ticket. We're going to cover all of that in the show. So thanks for being on. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Let's get into it. All the way from Australia. By the way, what part of Australia are you from? Melbourne. Melbourne. I, lo I lived in Melbourne once. I sure cheap in New Zealand. Then I went, I learned salsa dancing. I used to be, I became a professional salsa dancer, but my first class was in Melbourne, Melbourne Australia. Melbourne of all places. Are you Italian or? No, I'm a big mix. My mom is Australian and my dad's Arab. Okay. So, cause I was like, Sabri, is that like? Well, good. Well, welcome on the show. Um, I saw, I don't know where I first saw your stuff, but I saw a post you did on social and I was like, this guy's smart. And then I realized a lot of people I know, know you and what? When you, when you think about your life right now, it's like, I always say, what is the one thing you could stand on stage out of 8 billion people and there's only 12 people up there, like a basketball team, and you're competing for being the best in the world at that thing? I have my thing. I'm always like, what is the one thing I could stand up with 12 other people and potentially come out number one skill in the entire world? What, what do you think here is this? Customer acquisition. Customer, but is that like Facebook ads, YouTube ads, or just anything? You're like, I can get you customers. When it comes to just getting customers online, when it's yeah. getting eyeballs and then converting that those eyeballs yeah. at any different price point, yeah. Um, you know, because I don't look at it as just like it's just Facebook, because Facebook's not right for all businesses. Yeah, yeah. So it's more about sizing up the business. What are the unit economics? Yep. Where do I think, you know, the best places to go out there and get customers and be able to flip it into into money um so I, I don't look through the lens of like what's the traffic channel i don't like to limit myself to just that tool yeah it's more so just looking at the lens of like if i was operating this business how would i go out there and get customers what's the type of funnel that i would do what traffic source what would the office look like how long have you been doing it 17 years so okay. i got my first job in sales when i was 16 and i was the the worst salesperson there okay. and the founder pulled me aside he was going to get rid of me he was like, dude, you got really good work ethic, but you suck. Like you can't sell. <laughs> and it's like, a nice compliment sandwich, they call those. Yeah. You give someone a compliment and then you destroy them. Then you give them a little compliment at the end. And he was like, unless you turn something around, like I'm going to have to get rid of you. Yeah. Um, and I did. And then I did that and I became the top salesperson there. And I traveled all over the world selling everything that you can imagine. One-to-one, one-to-many, all of that kind of jazz. And then I started my first internet business when i was 22 selling water filters what year is this um what year would that be probably 2009 i think okay so you've been building funnels that's when you started building kind of funnels yeah that's when i yeah. first learned about funnels and traffic i was yeah. i got my start in seo doing yeah. seo um, and then that was when I kind of fell down the rabbit hole of direct response and buying traffic and, and doing all of that and moving away from being on the front lines yeah. um, of capitalism in terms of being actually on the telephone, converting customers yeah. to doing one to many. So right now, fast forward 2024, 2025, for, I got people, a lot of people follow me for marketing. They want to know what's like the most practical advice in terms of which platform and which strategy. So I'm gonna throw a couple options. Give me which one. Let's play a little game. Yep. You gotta pick one or the other, it's a hypothetical game. Obviously in the real world, you can advertise on multiple platforms. But if you had a choice right now, hypothetically, you can only do organic marketing, building a whole bunch of sub accounts, Instagram accounts, going viral and generating sales that way, or paid ads. If you had to pick which one, Paid ads. Paid ads, okay. Game level two. If you could only be Facebook ads or YouTube ads, which one would you select? Facebook ads. Facebook ads. If you could only drive people to a high ticket landing page where you're selling something, let's call it over $1,000, or low ticket, what would you do? High ticket. High ticket. If you could drive those high ticket people to a free form 
versus a booking page where they book a time? Which one would you choose? Now it's starting to get a little bit complicated because ideally I'd- I'm book... taking you down a path of yeah, I, I, I Ideally, I'd book them to the booking page and I would have a step to that where I capture the details. Bridge page, I call that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we- So, okay. Next, once you capture them, are you calling them with a one call closer or do you like setter closer system? I like to have my setters be my closers. So one call, theoretically, one call. the setter calls, they get them on the phone. They don't say, let me get you on with somebody. More yeah, advanced. with the caveat of like the closers are going to always be setting yes. their, their own appointments. Yes. So that's typically how you start. Yes. Yeah. So next question in the hypothetical price point. What's your price? You have to pick one price point to build an entire business and you're not allowed to have any other price points. No backends, nothing. For this hypothetical, you got one price. You got to make all your money with one price. 50K. Five zero. 50,000 US. Okay. Are you selling done with you or done for you? For 50K. A hybrid. So what's the hybrid? Because I feel like those are kind of hybrids themselves. What's yep. the hybrid of done with you for those of you watching that means hey come into my system and i'm gonna do zoom calls with you and help let's say you're selling a package where you help people optimize their sales team done with you would be like you're gonna do all the work but i'm training your team on how to get better at sales done for you is sit back relax we'll do the phone calls for you, you, yeah. you what's a hybrid of those yeah the hybrid for me is it's the done with you but there's done for you components because gotcha anybody that sold the two of them know that done for you is the sexiest thing to sell yes um but the and, hardest to fulfill correct and the most difficult to scale yes so realistically i think that the game is won a lot of the time is when it's it's pitched as a done for you but it's really done with you and yeah. that's because you're giving people a lot of the things that they would typically be coached to build themselves, but you're just being like, here is my funnels. Here yeah. is the script. Here is all the VSL. This is everything that you need. Yeah. What about, okay, going back to this hypothetical yes, no. Are you doing image ads or video ads? You said Facebook, you'd prefer over YouTube. Image ads or video ads? If I had to pick one. Have to pick one. And this is, by the way, for you. This is not for the average person. This is literally, let's say you it is started me, from zero dollars and you got to rebuild it, an empire. It, it, it's me, it's video ads. Video ads. How long? As long as I need in order to make the pitch that I'm asking. But what does that usually come out to be? I run ads that are 17 minutes long. Yeah. On Facebook. And I have ads that I run that are an hour and six minutes. Yeah. On, on Facebook as well, but nothing less than five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to boost whole VSLs. I was on Logan Paul's show and he's like, Ty, you're the first person I ever saw on Snapchat. I uploaded an hour and a half VSL to my Snap story. It used to cut it for you. So it would cut it into 15 seconds. So it goes into four, I think it was 15 seconds. So you'd have four per minute times a hundred minutes. I had a 400 snap story. He's like, dude, I watch it all the way to the end. So yeah, long, I always, one of my friends, I think is the best copywriter in the world. His answer to that question is as you go as long as you can until you get boring. A hundred percent. Then you stop. Yeah. So you're, but what's your average ad to sell a 50 K? Are you doing a shorter ad? Click here, go watch a separate landing page video. Or are you embedding the same ad as the ad and embed it on the lander. Yeah, I'm typically doing like the whole VSL as the ad. Yes. Yeah. But do you also, because people click off the platform, they're on Facebook, they say learn more. Do you also have that video on the lander or is it yes. straight TSL, tech sales lander? No, no, we don't, we, we're not really doing TSLs. But is it the same video as they just saw? Maybe yes. they didn't finish it? Yeah. Yeah, because I see a big mistake. A lot of marketers out there are doing video landing pages that are different or aren't congruent and they're thinking most people didn't watch the whole thing especially on facebook people scroll they move off so that's interesting and 
Are you collecting any money on the initial funnel or is it all free lead gen forms? We we run a combination of both. We've got low ticket funnels and we've mm -hmm. also got just straight. So if you only could choose one, what are you choosing? High ticket. Yeah. Yeah. High ticket, no money up front. Yeah. Now, have you done a hybrid of that? I've done this hybrid before, which I like, which is a high ticket credit card off, you know, where they enter their credit card. I call those internally, we call those credit card funnels. So to me, I separate funnels is you have credit card funnels and you have free lead gen funnels. Yeah. Lead gen funnels can break into just a form or having a calendar booking. Credit card funnels can be low. I consider one to $10, uh, one to a hundred dollars, mid a hundred to a thousand and high a thousand plus. So I've actually done a hybrid where it's enter your credit card in order to book with me which I, I like, I consider that. But you have to have a lot of authority as a brand to do that. When I was starting out, I couldn't do that. You yeah, have I've to have a pretty that. big embedded audience, you know? Yeah, I think it, it just, it all depends on the model that you're going for, right? It's like, you have to run the unit economics and see what is our cost to book an appointment when we take a deposit versus non-deposit and how many salespeople yes. do I have? What's going to be cheaper? Yes. Is there going to be arbitrage in the amount of humans that I need in order to fulfill on that. If it was just me and I, or I had two or three closes and I wanted to bring them in the only the most highest quality leads, yeah. then yeah, that, that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, I have much higher ticket stuff. So I have stuff that's a million dollar products. So for me there, like I've got a consulting package where I partner with brands. It's a million bucks. Somebody just went into it like a month ago. So for me, I like to save my best closers for selling hundred thousand to a million dollar products. Yeah. So for me, if I can liquidate at two thousand dollar funnel, that's giving my guys a really good quality lead. Somebody but will enter. Is that a million dollar offer like a back end offer that you've got that they graduate from? They can go it can, not necessarily. No. It can, so what a, in that case, it would be a video ad that talks about my million dollar I launched this in twenty sixteen. You know, first guy put in 1.8 million. He's made back literally about 40 million profit very much because of that video that I did with him and make him famous. So now I have a front end product. It's like, look, if you're already doing 50 million and but your product is limited by how many people know you or you're a personal brand and you see the value of personal brand, I can make you famous fast. You will spend more than a million bucks trying to build a personal brand. I spent 50 million cash, literally, in building my personal brand just with eyeballs. I saw something Alex Hormozzi recently said, I've been saying this for years, I saw him say, hey, it'll cost you 50 million to build a brand like Hormozzi's. So I tell people, you give me a million and I'll start embedding you into my story and millions of people will know you. So for a product like that, I would do like a two to $5,000 credit card up front to talk to me on the phone. So it's a consulting call. So if they don't proceed from there, but I'll have my closers on that call. So when I hang up the, fall, the phone after 30 minutes, they'll move in and sell a hundred thousand to a million dollar package. Got it. So it's not really a back end, like, yeah. I, like 67 steps. I have, you know, I've had a crazy amount of people buy my programs and over time, this is like, we're directly going at a higher ticket, yep. you know, but that, that, like I said, I couldn't do that 10 years ago. You have to evolve with your brand. You know, now my brand, I can still, I, I evolved to where I think there's the least competition right now. I started my person. I mean, I started building funnels in 01 and back then everybody, there was no competition. Nobody was building funnels. I built my own click funnel software, my own in 06. So I still use flip, is we would have flipped that question. And I was to ask you the same questions what would you yes. say so is the question is it me now or me starting out you now me now i would do i would say youtube ads 15k product um probably because i can do b2c and b2b so i probably do 15k products youtube ads what funnel i would do i'm like you i mean i've i've done law i would do video ads i like a shorter video ad, like three, four minutes to a lander that's like 45 minutes to an hour 30. Yeah. If you're, what, if you're going to do it on YouTube, that's what makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So why do you think that's different for Facebook? I just think that like it's a, it's a bit of a different dynamic because somebody is there waiting to watch a video 
yeah. when you hit them with a, with a video ad, right? So it's like, there's almost like, they don't know with Facebook, they don't know what is when they scroll. They don't know what's going to be further down. Mm. With YouTube, they've already clicked on the thing that they want to consume. Yeah. And then you're trying to get them to delay that by watching a 30 minute embedded VSL directly yes. on the platform. There's just like a, a bit more of a ticking time bomb where the gotcha. person has the cursor on the skip button. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's, it, it's but a, Facebook, they can just keep scrolling. They too. can, but it's, they're aimlessly scrolling. Right. Where with YouTube, there's intent behind yeah. the way that they're looking. Although with YouTube them. shorts, now it's starting, YouTube is starting to merge. Because I did a lot of, that. the one, the counter argument, I can see both sides. The counter argument is that YouTube, people are there already ready to watch longer stuff. And it's funny, I've had people watch my long ads that were like, Ty, I forgot what I was typing in. I was typing in like, how to make money. And my video came up and they thought it was the organic result. Never underestimate the lack of tech sophistication on earth. So people were like, oh, I, I didn't even know it was an ad and I watched for an hour. So now the split for you in terms of you. So you spend most of your money on YouTube ads right now. Now I, it alternates based on compliance. Like right now, YouTube is way stricter. They have way more AI, you know, than face. I remember when Facebook was the strict one. Yeah. 2016, 2017, ah, Facebook. You couldn't get anything approved. Now it's, I think it flip flops with platforms, you know? Yeah, you could. What are you finding? You finding easier compliance on Facebook or YouTube? YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I guess it, it really depends on what they're kind of categorizing your content in and what yes. stage. There's obviously a bunch of people that were using AI and doing all this face cloning of Elon Musk and stuff and running all these black hat <laughs> crypto yeah. offers. They just kind of fucked it for everybody. Yeah. Which they always do. Like you get these black hat guys that just move in. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like Facebook was super tight. It has definitely loosened up substantially. Yes. Now you can make a lot more claims that yes. didn't allow before and afters. You can do that now that they're, they're loosening up a little bit. Do you, so your main business model now, you have different parts of your business. You have an agency, right? Yeah. For like higher end. And then you have like lower ticket training and then you have a done kind of hybrid. Yes. Correct. So what. Do you spend more of your time on which of those? Me, I sp so I've got, you know, a general manager who runs the day-to-day -day yeah. of my business. The thing that I'm really focused on is like not what's going on in my businesses like this quarter, but yeah. like what are we going to be doing this quarter, next year, or so the strategy. year, or five years, mainly on yeah. strategy and on innovation. Yeah. And then I use my own individual business as the guinea pig on paid ads and all of these different things, find out what works and then teach those to my team to then roll them across all of our clients. Well, how many hooks when you, I have a system that I, that I trademarks called my nine lever system. So my CMO, chief marketing, different chief marketing officers I have worked for them. They kind of follow this blueprint and, you know, number one lever to making more money online is pick products that the market is dying for. Like that. So how do you find those? Do you, deploy ads with a lot of different hooks and see what sticks what's been and, and what's been the best hook you've ever done i'm known for different hooks here in my garage is a pretty well-known hook in the space but i had other i had a crypto bitcoin two pizza one that one got that one actually got more views than here in my garage but it got that's when youtube was taking down crypto stuff so i've got my smma one what's been like your most powerful hooks um one was the, around like a campaign that we did where it was like, stop praying to the internet gods. And there was like Elon Musk and Zuckerberg, like dressed up as, you know, religious figures in the background. And it was like, there was, I was holding a funeral for money that had just been murdered. <laughs> and there was a big coffin of money. Okay. Um, that did really well. And then we had one called the boy hook, where it was like, okay. most agencies are like boys. Okay. Um, and we went into like, they'll promise you like, you know, a truckload of impressions, but no sales and they'll never talk about ROI and all of these kind of things. So that did well. But typically when we shoot an ad, we'll shoot 10 different hooks yeah. for the one long form. And then that's where most people kind of stop. They'll be like, okay, cool. We ran 10 hooks. These three are the winners. And that's like, 
that's kind of the end of the road. What I have found that works even better than that is to double down on the winning hooks. So re-edit those hooks. Yes. And because you get all the retention data now and you can see like when people are hopping off, when the spikes are, you can then go and go, okay, well, why are people clicking off after that part of the hook? Can I re-edit that? How can I yeah. tune it up and tighten it up a little bit? But you can get so much But more. do you just re-edit the original hook or yes. do you re-record it? No, you re-edit it. But you re-edit it, maybe put some graphics in it, make it shorter, longer. Correct, kind of move thing. certain parts yeah. out. Like, you know, because typically when you even have the finished hook, there was so much more other additional content that got cut to get it to that place. Yes. Um, or there was a different angle or there was something else in there. So that's one thing that we do. And then... Those hooks, depending on how much ad spend you're going to put behind them and how big those audiences are, as you're well aware of fatigue. Yeah. Once they're fatigued, there's so much more juice in the in the back half of the actual ad. Yeah, because nobody ever got there. Exactly. Yeah. So that was where, you know, the hook wasn't didn't appeal to them. There wasn't the right identity triggers. There wasn't the right pattern matching on there. So then we'll reshoot multiple new hooks on the same body copy and get more juice from that same orange because... If you're in an evergreen market, like say, for instance, like scaling offers or getting people customers, a lot of the desires of that market is not going to change in a year, two years, three years. The, yes. the shiny, sexy thing on the front end is that it's a messenger body, that's AI, that's outbound VSLs, webinars, whatever it's going to be. That thing, the hot flavor of the month thing will change. Yeah. But the actual core pains and desire of that market and what it is that they want aren't yeah, going to change exactly and so instead of just completely redoing an entire ad you can get a lot more juice out of the orange by just cycling in new hooks yeah i, I use something called the 12 12 12 formula so we basically record 12 ads we run them for 12 days and we do that for 12 cycles so 144 days and you can re you can dial in a crazy amount of stuff. I mean, I we've got a new. We're in the middle for one of my companies. I've got like twenty two companies that I have my own agency. Most of my clients for my nine lever agency are just my own businesses. We occasionally take outside clients, but not. It's not my favorite thing to do unless they're really big companies or really skilled. So we dropped in twelve creatives, twelve ads. They're about three minute ads, twelve different ones. We force Facebook to spend by putting them in separate ad sets, yes. one ad per ad set. I don't do that forever, but I like that at the, when I'm testing, what does the market want? So for example, one of my best uh, concepts that the market wants, level one, I just recorded a video. I was in a tank top. I was like, yo, I bought a lot of big companies. If you want me to value your company, you want a free valuation, DM me the word valuation. So that brought in. I've never, you'll appreciate this because you know the game. So I consider a qualified lead someone who has 100,000 or more liquid cash. I ask liquid cash on the form. I think it's a mistake. Most people are asking revenue and all. I like, I go for the real question. But that was bringing me qualified leads. A lot of them, one to 10 million liquid cash for 17 bucks a piece. I've never, dude, I've been running campaigns since 20, 2001. That's the highest quality for the lowest cost per lead. And so that's a winner from my 12, 12, 12. But I had to run a lot of losers. And people are afraid of that in marketing. You probably see that with your clients. You're like, the smartest guy would be like, look, spend a million bucks finding me the angle that the market wants. Most entrepreneurs, they go, this is what I want to sell. And they force it on the market. So do you do that ever with customers where you're like, let's test concepts? 100%. That's the thing that drives me like probably the most crazy. Yeah. Is that like when you sit down and you think about what it is that you're trying to achieve for a business that hasn't ever run cold traffic at wild scale and got yeah. to convert. What you're trying to do for them is to create a golden goose that just lays eggs yes. all day long, aka install an ATM machine in their house. Yeah. That they put one dollar in and they get three, five, ten bucks back. Yeah. And if it was very, very simple, like you could spend five grand in a month and go find that ATM machine, like everyone would be billionaires. Yes. That's Some not people don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So the reality of it is what I say to people is, is you're going to pay in time or you're going to pay with money. Yep. What do you have more of? Right. And based on their answer to that question is going to depict it's like we could spend five grand per month yeah. for six months. We could spend a hundred grand a month for six months, 
or we could come out of the gate really hot and heavy to find that winning angle. Yeah. It's not going to be, we're just going to put it out and we're going to hit it, but when we are hit it. So that's the first thing that drives me crazy. And then the second thing that drives me crazy is that once people spend all the money to find that winner, yeah, they want to go find something else. Right. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like you find the bullseye market hit through yeah. iteration yeah. and then you get wealthy through repetition. You need to yes. get more inputs into that same system and you need to scale it. Because when I sit down with most people and I do a diagnosis on their business and I'm finding out what their bottlenecks are, it will always go something along the lines of, oh yeah, we're doing Facebook ads. And I'll be like, terrific. How's that going for you? And they'll be like, yeah, we're getting this many appointments. This is how many sales we make. Okay, cool. What are you selling at price points? After I hit them with rounds and rounds of questions to get down to the kernel of the matter, we'll figure out that they're at a 10 to one ROI. Right. And then I'll be like, are you spending more? Why have right. you spent more money? Yeah. And they're like, oh, I, I just haven't really thought about that. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's, that's why most people, but remember, if it wasn't for the stupidity of other people, you wouldn't be able to get rich. It's a good Charlie Munger thing. So when I see people doing illogical things, I'm like, I can either fight it or just be like, well, my opportunity. By the way, what's the most you're seeing right now for your clients that you can spend before there's major drop-offs in ROAS? Like around, what are some campaigns you have right now? Let's say Facebook. Around 100 grand a day. Yeah. yeah. How many different campaigns is that usually? It depends on the size of the market. America's audiences are much more forgiving than, yeah. than Australia or the UK or other markets. And the way that the algorithm works right now, how you can just set it to no targeting, yes. pick the geography and just ride that wild bull on crack. Yeah. Um, it's a different, it's a different game to, if you're in Australia, there's no way that you can get away with spending that. No, you're not going to spend a hundred grand. Yeah. So it's is that Facebook and YouTube or just one platform? Just Facebook. Just Facebook. Yeah. And, and what for type, that, you what be type running industry is that you Hundreds of ads you'd yeah, be yeah. running, right? Could yeah. be property investment, home building, yeah. business building. Skin. What's, what's your favorite client? They come to you. You're like, I know how to make money. Is it good? The best type Real of estate? business for me yeah. is somebody that has a sales team. Yeah. They're selling something at above $20,000. Yeah. They're in the car, they're moving, and they just want to go a lot faster. Yeah. And the reason that I but say- But what industry? What industries would be your favorite? Like if somebody came to you and said, I want to sell underwater basket weaving, I'd be like, ah, that's tough to sell. But what, what's an industry you like? Real estate, info courses, well, people. Relationship, biz op. It's the three yeah. big. The, but the have three you been big. able to scale- Dating to 100K? No. Yeah. Wealth is easier to scale. There's more demand. From yeah. Market. So when somebody is working with you and they're at 100K of scale, okay, ad spend per day, what's a ROAS you would target? What can you realistically? And I like to do the short-term ROAS, so sub seven-day ROAS or 30-day ROAS. Two, three? Between two and three. Yeah. If you can, I mean, if you can spend 100 grand a day, and have and what's the days to the that ROAS? Thirty days. Thirty days. Yeah, if you could have sub thirty day ROAS at a hundred k a day spend, you know, I've spent more than that. I've spent, but you got to to spend more than a hundred k a day. I think the most I've spent in a day, let's say you spend two to six hundred thousand a day, you have to have a usually you have to have a physical product for that, you know, and and. You have to own big brands that people know. If you're in kind of a selling courses or lead gen, usually you get a crit. Most people, I mean, most people can't scale past 2,000. Yeah. Facebook's very good and tricky at giving people good ROAS at the beginning. False positive. Oh, they love Gives it. Gives you that little pocket of the hyperactive yes. buyers in the traffic. And yes. you're like, oh, this is good. They baby. literally wrote in their algorithm, I'm sure of it. It's like, What's our best pixel traffic? We know these people buy stuff. Every time a new customer comes along, give them one or two sales at $6 CPA just to get them all excited. Give them a little shot of dopamine Exactly. Early That's on. what TikTok did to grow. They're like, hey, everybody, we'll just add three zeros to whatever your real view count. And people who get three views on Instagram would go over to TikTok, post the same video. I was like, 600 million people saw this video. I'm like, yeah, if you trust the TikTok number, view numbers, but... um. So let, let me ask you a little about the personal life. So if you, I like this rapid fire kind of question to get to know somebody. Do you have kids? I do. 
Okay. If you start all over your time machine back to your 12 year old self, if you've made a lot of money as an entrepreneur, what age do you tell yourself that you should have your first kid? Knowing what you know now, how old were you when you had your first kid? I was 30. Okay. I'd, I'd say 26. So a little bit earlier. Okay. That's interesting. What's the reason? I love children okay. and I want to have lots of children. Okay. How and many is lots? Like if I started at 26, I'd shoot for eight. Okay. Well, I'm positive. Um, there is a millionaire guy in Eastern Europe who him and his wife had 21 children this year. They flushed her eggs, IVF, surrogates, and she plans to have 100. Apparently, he's in jail for something else, so I guess it's delayed for a year, but you have, if you flush eggs... You There's always have... someone wants more. Yeah, 100, 100 is the... That, that, that's a lot. I don't think I'm that much. But so, yeah, eight. I, you want eight. Yeah, I, I like I like having lots of children. I think that like in the in the latter years of life and having lots of grandkids around and, and being around family, it's like, you know, I feel that typically the older that you get, depending on who you are, the closer and the tighter knit your social circle gets. Right. And having family and having kids around, it's just like having your own squad. Yes. And it's, yes. yeah, so I, I definitely think that, you know, I, I certainly wanted to make sure that I was in a certain financial place before yes. I had kids. Um, and I think that people come up with these arbitrary numbers or certain places. And what I tell people now is you're never going to be ready for kids. There's never yeah. going to be a time that you wake up and be like, I feel prepared yeah. to have a child. That's interesting. So you would tell yourself to have kids a little younger. Are you married? I am. What age would you tell yourself to get married? If ever, you could say, I mean, yeah, now no, no, you no, don't no, have to get married to have kids. 25, 26. Gotcha. So that's cutting a little tight. 26, then you have the kid the same day. That's yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on how long you've been dating for. I, I, right. I dated my, my wife for, for quite some time before I got married. But you're more of a fan because you're a successful entrepreneur. A lot of entrepreneurs now are teaching secure the bag first before you think about love, kids, you're kind of opposite school. No, I think that I, I'm definitely not the opposite school. But okay. I, I, you're saying now, if I could go back yeah. with everything that I've achieved now. But then when are you making tell, money? And go tell my 12-year-old yeah. self. Yeah. Like, I'm going to tell him, like, immediately when you turn 18, like, f*** university, f*** all this other stuff. Go make right? money. Go, go make money and go and dial in. And if you dialed and locked in yeah. from, like, the ages of 18 to 28, yeah. a decade you'd have enough money to have a child. How long did it take you to make first million from the day you started? Two years. Two years. So in that scenario, if you say you need to have a million, you could start at 24. You could. Yeah, so plenty of time. Now, in terms of bigger picture, what do you think happens when you die? I don't believe in re reincarnation I, I i i can't hear sit here and typically say that like no one can say that they have a, a high level of certainty of what happens i truly believe that nothing happens so you're just gone they call you're that nothing more than a whisper in the wind a materialist okay going back to australia what's the number one thing that australia does better than america What's the number I'd one say, thing I'd say in general, better the, than America? The, the quality of life. Yeah. I think that there's two different extremes. You know, there's... I don't know whether it's still the case in America. It's probably changed quite a lot. I think that, like, Americans were really known for having, like, incredibly strong work ethic. Yes. And I think that, like, if you traveled the world and you went to Europe and you went to Australia and you went to a lot of places, like, one of the things that was like the, the social currency of America was like they had very, very strong work ethic. I think that's definitely changed. I think yeah. with, the, with the later generations that that, that work ethic is definitely degrading. Um, and it's... And you think Australia is better? No, I think that the thing that they do that, you know, by and large has, has been, you know, an advantage to them is just like having a very high quality of life. Right. Yeah. Friends, family go on vacations correct and what does america, what's america do better though that can be to their detriment there's, right th there's always extremes yeah 
right? But I think that for the people that are entrepreneurial and are hungry and switched on, because there are a lot of people that don't typically have that that hustle muscle or the, the, the really strong work ethic is that it allows you to counterbalance a lot of that like always on entrepreneurial yeah. with the the well more more, more balanced stuff yeah um things that americans do better than australia right it sounds like it's just the opposite it's like that hard work ethic or let me take that back you said that's gone so lo- what's your answer then so i think that the thing that the americans do a lot better than the australians is celebrate success we have a very severe case of tall poppy syndrome in in australia and it's like if you go out and speak in an event in america they're cheering you on if they see that you're doing successful it's like they really get behind their people and rally them and in australia it's more like a zero-sum game it feels like if you're successful i'm not and that's one of the things that i absolutely love about americans is just like they really really do appreciate success it's like a fisherman sees another fisherman from afar (laughs) i like that so right now Let's just say, magically, you made $10 million cash. Somebody's going to wire it. It's after tax. You may have way more money than this, but let's just use this. I like to use the same scenario for multiple guests. Someone wires you. Actually, my neighbor won the lottery. He won over a billion cash after tax. You win a $10 million lottery after cash, uh, tax. You're not allowed to work anymore. Do you take the money? No. Okay. You win a hundred million. You're not allowed to work anymore. Do you take the money? No. A billion. That slowed you down. One caveat, you cannot work at all. You got to live off that bill. Yes or no. And I can't have any other you can have. Philanthropy. You can have nonprofit. You can work toward nonprofit, but no more money can ever come into your personal bank account. You can yes. live off. Yep. So a billion is uh, yep. your number. Yep. So you're ambitious. A hundred mil ain't enough. Okay. Well, we got to do this again. I want to do, I want to do a follow up with this because so for those you watching that want to get the notes on the things we talked about on today's podcast, want to hear about building hundred K a day funnels, tylopez.com slash Sabri podcast, S A B R I podcast. We'll have the show notes. We'll have links. And, uh, you know, this question I asked you, I really wonder if you actually had the hundred million in a sack and you're like, would you take, cause a lot of people are like, no, I want a billion. I'll tell you right now yeah. that there's no way I'd take it. zero. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. What I'm about not. you? Uh, uh, so this is in this scenario, me, this is like me and you were, have nothing now and we're going to be handed a hundred i think i would take i think a hundred million is a lot of money and uh i think 10 million you could argue isn't enough for life because of inflation so i don't know it's a tough question i would be on the fence but you see the way that i look at it it's not like oh like a hundred million that's not enough to live the rest of your life but i know it's like if you like entrepreneurship is the greatest sport ever Right. Right. And it never stops. And it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there's some dude out there that's looking to take your lunch money. Yes. I'm going to kick your ass. And if you just take all the bullets out of the gun and you're yeah. just running around, it, 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 it removes the stakes, right? Like revenue and money is a scoreboard. Like, yeah, that's you like the it. game. You're I'm, a not, game I'm, I'm not doing yeah. it for the money. Yeah. Like the money is the byproduct of it, but it's the fun. It's the building. It's having chips. It's using that. Like money is just video game tokens. Yeah. So that's the reason why for me, it's not like competitive. Well, whether it's the hundred million or the, right. the billion, it's you like, don't want to be taken out of. The yeah. I don't want to be game. coming out of the game. Well, thanks for being on the show. This was good, my man. Awesome. Thanks for having me on.